Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Michael Sean Taylor, who asked that I review the 1980 horror movie The Children. Now, it may seem a little weird to make a horror movie about children, but I, more than anyone, know just how terrifying kids can be. Honestly, I'm just happy you didn't ask me to review a movie called The Kennys. <laughs> The Children, also known as The Children of Ravensback, is a 1980 horror movie that's kinda like Night of the Living Dead if George Romero really, really hated kids. And despite its relative obscurity today, the movie was apparently a decent hit on the drive-in circuit when it was released. Uh, for the days when a movie like this could actually make money in theaters instead of going direct to Netflix. Well, I made a promise to review this movie, so let's get started. Greetings from Trauma Villain. What the hell? Lloyd Kaufman? He's in this movie? Oh wait, my mistake. This is just the intro on the DVD. And welcome to the lovingly recreated, digitally remastered, director's cut version of that 1980s classic horror film, The Children. Mmm, digitally remastered, huh? Yeah, the film scratches have never seemed clearer. I'm here in Iceland. Oh shit, you mean this intro is not done yet? When was the first time you saw the children? Or... Well, I was about eight or nine years old, and uh... Look, I appreciate Icelandic Ego Raptor here wanting to give his opinion, but can we get to the movie, please? Mmm, all bright. Something that can't be said about the people who made this movie. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, did they remaster this by dragging it through a dirt road? I've seen Prince of Turkish knockoff movies that are in better shape than this. Well, it's a horror movie, which means it has to begin with something bad happening. Yeah, but maybe there really was a, a pressure drop. Look, if we go back in, they're just gonna send us back out here again. You wanna do this again? I mean, we only work at a nuclear power station. No need to check if everything's in order. What's the worst that could happen? You can tell there's a leak because the film stock appears to have radiation poisoning. And because radiation always takes the form of mustard gas. Looks like these kids picked a bad day to take a field trip to this place. Not that it really matters, since the class apparently only has about six students. Hmm, do I say that it looks like they're entering the movie The Fog or Pod People? Tough call. Well, I guess this means the kids are evil now, so let's get introduced to our other characters. I'll be home tonight for supper. I'm just gonna go watch a drive-in movie in my tractor. I'm guessing these two are the young couple that are gonna bang and end up getting killed afterwards, because horror filmmakers in the 80s were apparently a bunch of prudes. Well, is anybody at home? No. We're all alone then? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what that means. We can have ice cream for supper and your parents can't stop us. The town sheriff finds the school bus, and it looks like the radiation vaporized all the kids, so problem solved. <laughs> Okay, the movie's not over yet, but I do find it a little weird that the sheriff's reaction to a busload of missing kids is mild amusement. Oh, that's why the nuclear power plant sprung a leak? It was built near an ancient rural white people burial ground. Fun fact, in the 80s you didn't need a pool to show a chick in a bikini. Some patio furniture was enough. And I'm starting to question the sheriff's methods. I just ran up on the school bus about a hundred or so yards before the entrance to your place. And Fred's not on it, none of the kids so thought maybe they'd come down here. Wow, it's almost as if they're missing and you should go looking for them. The sheriff's name is Hart. I'm guessing because that's where he's going to get stabbed later. Anyway, Hart asks the town doctor to take a look in the school bus. These are Tommy's things. Is everything he had with him today? I guess so. Thanks, Doc. That PhD's really served you well. Deputy Horny gets called away before he can score with the farmer's daughter, so who knows, maybe that means he'll live. In the meantime, though, they're coming to get you, Barbara. Tommy! No, don't run towards the scary music, you idiot. And speaking of the music, it's starting to remind me of another famous horror movie. <laughs> Alright, so now we know the nuclear plant is by a graveyard and the Bates Motel. Uh-oh, looks like the bus driver got the film's makeup budget on his face. And I don't think this kid loves his mother as much as Norman Bates did. Okay, so now we know the kids have killer hugs, but did they touch the camera too? Good God. By the way, have I mentioned the print of this movie looks like shit yet? 
The sheriff asks more people if they've seen the kids, which I guess is the next best thing to actually looking for them. Found the bus parked across the road. Motor's still running. Yeah? Nobody on it. That's not like Fred. He wouldn't leave that motor running. Yes, it's almost as if they went missing mysteriously. Start looking for them! Or just smile and talk to more locals. Molly, you need a can of ether. Another can of ether, John. Why don't you get a real mechanic to tune up that car of yours? Just... It's not for the car. I'm gonna huff it and get high. God, get off my back. Uh, listen, I'd love to help you with your car, but there's some kids missing and I really need to look like I'm trying to find them. You may not have needed a pool to show a woman in a bikini in the 80s, but you did need one if you wanted to show a woman topless. Also, Sonny Bono was jacked in the 80s. The sheriff asked these two about the missing kids, and let me guess, they haven't seen him. I discovered the school bus out by the cemetery. None of the children were on it. Neither was Fred Mansfield, the driver. He probably took them on an impromptu picnic or something. Okay, is it me, or do the people in this town really not give a shit about their kids disappearing mysteriously? Did Janet say anything about a picnic this morning? I really haven't the faintest idea. I never rise before 10. Yeah, well, I never rise before noon, so I guess I win. You know, maybe it's for the best that this girl became a radioactive zombie. It was either that or be one of the twins from The Shining. Looks like this lady's feeling a bit of the vapors, and she's about to feel some more. Okay, I get it, you're happy to see your kid, Jesus. And Mommy looks way different without her makeup on. The town puts up a roadblock, I guess to prevent more people from coming in to help look for the kids? But never mind that. Is the deputy gonna get some yet? Harry. I can't. You mean I rode all the way down here to see you and you won't even kiss me? I can't. Dude, she wants you to do it with those two watching. That's totally her thing. Unfortunately, the roadblock's interrupted by two villains from a Miami Vice episode. I take it you don't know who I am? Well, according to IMDB, your name is Martin Brennan, and this is the only movie you've ever been in. So no, I don't know who you are. Wow, this guy must be important. He's got a car phone and a dash cam. She acts like she wants to die. Yeah, I say that to all cyclists I see on the road. And just go around her, dumbass. She searches a house to see if anyone's home, but all she finds is a fake scare. <laughs> You know, normally a scare like that would have been done with a cat, so I guess that's one way this movie's original. Oh shit, looks like Jason Voorhees is in town and he's about to go farming. <laughs> oh, my mistake, it's just the psycho theme again. What's the matter with you, Paul? He's one of the children of the dam, that's what's wrong with him. And there's a switch, she didn't have sex with the deputy, but she still ends up getting killed anyway. This movie has no respect for horror movie conventions. Daddy. Daddy. Nice one, movie. I've always said horror movies need more little boy crotch transitions. Something's been bothering me, though. Didn't this lady go into the radioactive cloud, too? How come she hasn't painted her nails yet? Is Jennifer with you? Honey, we don't know where any of the Raven's Back kids are. What are you talking about? I passed the bus. I also passed through this big yellow cloud. I found a patch of melanoma on my back, but other than that, I'm fine. Well, now I know radiation is apparently harmless to people that have passed puberty, so learn something new every day. Wow, looks like these guys are as excited watching that roadblock as I am watching this movie. Please tell me this guy finds something exciting. I found the kids. Hey, hey, hey. Harry the Hawk does it again. Okay, you deserve to die just for that stupid catchphrase. <laughs> little smart ass. See, even the movie agrees with me. Here's another way the movie agrees with me. We both need a drink. The cops really need to hurry up and find these kids. They gotta be on the set of I Drink Your Blood by morning. But first, they need to ask the deputy if he got laid yet. He's dead. You wanna stay here? Hmm, let me think. No! Why would you even ask that? And besides, they can't stay there. They've got more big empty houses to look through in order to pad out the movie's runtime. Okay, that's not exactly true. The house isn't quite empty. Oh, 
bullseye, Billy. You just shot a dead dog. Hey, if there is anything the Resident Evil games have taught me, it's that you can't be too careful. And yeah, fellas, it is about time you called for help. Where is that old poop? God damn it, the line's dead. Wait, so did the kids cut the phone lines? They never do explain this. The movie's just like, all the phones are out because fuck you, they just are, okay? And the cops never used their radios to call for help, so I guess the kids must have got to those too. Oh well, time to shoot first and say you thought they were going for a weapon on the report later. The cops find one of the kids from the bus acting a lot like a zombie, but her fingernails aren't painted, so I guess she's cool. This is then followed by them... searching another empty house. Here, let me see if I can sum up this scene for you. Hey, is anyone home? Huh, I guess nobody's home. How about this room? Anyone in this room? Huh, I guess nobody's in this room either. Oh, that's weird. It looks like somebody was home, but there's nobody home. I'll go check outside. Is anyone outside? Oh, hey, a dead guy. This girl may not be a radioactive zombie, but that eyeliner's making me think she's Susie Sue. Nope, oh, I was wrong. She's a zombie. <laughs> To attack me, John. Okay, I know technically that's what she just tried to do, but as far as the sheriff knows, she just tried to give him a hug, and he reacted by smacking her away. Hopefully Granny store owner reacts a little better. It's the children! Title drop. And congratulations, movie, you managed to include one genuinely creepy shot. Oh, am I glad to see you, kids! Her death occurs off-screen, which is probably for the best, since I think the film splotches would have covered it up anyway. It's at this point we find out the kid's one weakness, locked doors. And here's something else you could do in the 80s, smoke and drink while pregnant. When did you leave, Paul? Sorry. I know this might lead to birth defects, but mommy's having a nick fit, okay, sweetie? <sighs> oh look, these two found a house where someone's actually home. Success. And don't worry about your son, as long as he keeps his door locked, the kids will just give up and go away. Hopefully the news can tell him what the hell is going on. So far, there is no explanation for the mysterious disappearance of school-aged children in a tri-state area. It's happening all over the place, Billy. Really? Because of that one radiation leak? Man, maybe it's time for that place to hire more than two construction workers to operate it. No, don't invite your radioactive child in. They're like vampires, or at least their makeup sorta is. <laughs> we know their hugs are deadly even though we haven't seen them do it yet. Not only are their hugs deadly, but their handshakes aren't very pleasant either. And I'm starting to think the sheriff is a little trigger happy. Sure, he just saw that this kid's touch is deadly, but his reaction to seeing another kid is to immediately shoot her twice in the chest. Jesus, Sheriff, at least make sure they're holding a toy gun or something before you do that. Unfortunately, the Sheriff didn't realize you're supposed to blindly shoot zombie children in the head. When you fired, did you hit that kid? No, I couldn't have missed her. When I shoot a kid, I make sure I hit him, damn it. It's at this point the movie really becomes like Night of the Living Dead, with the protagonist trying to lock up the house and protect against the most adorable monsters ever. Hugs. Hugs. No! They're only children! Kathy, what have you done? The children. Have you both gone mad? He was shooting the children. Yeah, if you really want to harm children, just drink and smoke heavily while you're pregnant with them like I do. Shit, maybe the kids really are like vampires since this one seems to be a fan of Salem's Lot. <laughs> you're right, Paul. Oh look, they're playing Tag You're Dead. Should be easy for this kid, though. Doesn't look like the zombies have mastered running. And besides, even though it's been pretty violent so far, this movie wouldn't actually kill a kid, right? Oh, yeah! Boom! 80s exploitation movie, bitches! Even your pets aren't safe here! Now that this kid's inside, looks like it's time for the sheriff to go full Butch Coolidge on his ass. <laughs> God damn, this movie really likes doing horrific shit to kids. This proves to be the children's weakness, since I guess radiation is stored in their fingernails? Also, I think this house might be haunted. What do we do now? Wait for him to pick us off one at a time? I don't bleed. What? Who the hell said that? Actually, you know what? I think I heard something else. Watch out for snakes! Well, now that you know how to kill them, the best thing to do is lock up the house and try and wait them out till morning, or just go wander around in the dark looking for him, whatever you feel like. I have no idea why the sheriff's in a basement now, but here's hoping he finds Bruce Campbell down there so he can show him how to properly kill undead monsters.
But do you know what he does find in the basement? Anything? That's right, a whole lot of filler. How about the outhouse? Might as well, you're just gonna find shit no matter where you look in this movie. And did the lighting guy take the night off? Or have the film scratches just completely consumed the movie now? These two finally find the rest of the kids in the barn. And even though I know the children are evil, this guy is still way too eager to kill a bunch of kids. <laughs> Hey, uh, listen, real sorry for killing your daughter right in front of you back there. Well, I'm gonna go get a glass of water. It's not over for the sheriff, though. He is gonna have some brutal paperwork to fill out after this. Hi! Uh, didn't this guy learn anything from Zombieland? You always make sure to double tap, even when you're cutting off little kids' hands. Poor Sheriff Hart. He had so many more children to blindly shoot at a second's notice. What? The hell? You mean the movie's not over yet? They killed all the kids, what else is there to do? Oh wait, I guess this lady still needs to give birth to the baby from It's Alive. You're really going too horrific. Okay, the next push, man. Next push. That's it. Easy. That's it. Push, push, push! Alright, this is just more filler to pad out the movie's runtime, but at least he's not walking around an empty house going, Hello? Is anybody home? Well, this lady also passed through the radioactive cloud, so what are the odds the baby's gonna be weird somehow? <laughs> oh no, the baby has black fingernails! And he doesn't appear to be burning his mom's tit by touching it, so other than that, I guess it's fine. You should still probably cut off its hands just to be sure, though. The Children is one of those movies that had lots of potential to be a fun, trashy cult film, but falls short of that. The idea of killer kids is kinda creepy, and some of the meltdown effects offer some cheesy fun, but the movie seems to think people slowly walking around empty houses and not finding anything is scary. It isn't. It's just filler. But hey, who knows, maybe if you just got through a Gamera marathon and you're itching to see some kids brutally killed on screen, I guess this movie will do the trick. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.